We've been focused on step nine. We made direct amends whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. And this is a difficult step, but it's life altering. And it, it will absolutely change the trajectory of your testimony, of your, of your recovery. And I have asked my son, Greg, to share some of his experience, strength, and hope with us tonight. So will you do me a favor? Big, give, give a real warm welcome to my son, Greg. What's up, guys? All right, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus overcoming alcoholism, and my name's Greg. I was born in the mid-'80s in northern Utah. In the mid-'90s, I moved to the big city of sin where all my formidable years were spent running around with my buddies and using copious amounts of mind-altering substances. I made a lot of mistakes in my late teens and early 20s that have substantially altered my life in adverse ways. Fast forward to November 2016, I had been incarcerated for the umpteenth time and was looking at two options, long-term rehab or prison. I decided I was not going to pick the latter. So I set off on an extremely eye-opening journey. Not only did it open my eyes, but it opened my heart for the possibilities of what God could do in my life. When I entered said rehab, it was supposed to be a 14-month program, but Greg being Greg, being stuck in my old pattern of thinking, I turned 14 months into 16. By the time I graduated the program, I had 18 months of sobriety, including my time spent incarcerated. Throughout the journey, I had many opportunities to think about all the people that I had hurt in my path of destruction, one of them being my little brother. I was the first person to introduce him to marijuana. If my mind serves me correct, I was also the first person to get him drunk. I was the person who caused a lot of hurt throughout our junior high and high school experiences. We went from being best friends to absolutely hating each other. We couldn't have a conversation without it turning into a fight. He got sober about five or seven years before I did, but we still couldn't shake the animosity between the two of us. While I was in rehab, my little brother got married. I was super happy for him, but it still didn't change anything. The funny fact about it is though, is his anniversary, anniversary and my sobriety date are the same day, only a year apart. Um, in 2018, I graduated from Adult and Teen Challenge up in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Upon graduation, I immediately started a step study. I had attempted multiple step studies previously, a bunch of them, I think three or four of them, but always quit before completing them. Usually quit right at the fourth step. Fourth step was always my downfall. Uh, actually, working every step while sober was truly a humbling experience. As I worked through my fourth step and putting on paper just how much damage and turmoil I had caused to everyone in my life, I came to realize how much I had hurt my little brother. My girlfriend at the time, now my wife, and my sister-in-law thought it was a good idea and it was time for my brother and I to sit down and talk. This is where step nine comes into play. Step nine reads, I made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Matthew chapter five, verses 23 and 24 says, therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. This talk was just the start of things changing between my brother and I, but I apologize apologized to him and made amends for all the things that I had done throughout our lives. Now, I can't say it's a happily ever after moment and that my brother and I are best friends again, you know, because that would truthfully be a lie. We have lives, we have wives. <laughs> and when we're together, we can actually have conversation, conversations and spend time together and actually enjoy it. Step nine has not been the easiest step that I've gone through. My brother is a good example of things turning out right. My biological mom, on the other hand, is not. Throughout the years of my addiction, I covered, a lot, I covered up a lot of bitterness and anger towards my mom with alcohol. Some of my actions towards her were not ones that I would want my sons to do, either one of my sons to do to their moms. Since doing my inventory, I've made many attempts to make amends with my biological mom to no avail. But step nine is not about them accepting my amends. It's about me making it. I'm not the best at making amends 
or admitting when I'm wrong. Those who are close to me, especially my wife, know this all too well. She likes to say that I'm always right, or that she's always right, and that I'm never wrong. It makes debates in our house pretty fun. Um, so if there's anyone in your life who you've wronged, make your amends before it's too late. They may not accept it, but the amends process is more for your relationship with God and less for your relationship with others. God asks us to do it, so we act in obedience. If they can't accept it, that's between them and God. As I always say, it is what it is. Thanks for letting me share my story. Again, I'm Greg, a grateful believer in Jesus, overcoming alcohol. Have a blessed night and be blessed. Thank you.